Hi, and welcome back to Catholic Mom and Daughter. Today we're sharing more of our favorite rosary miracle stories with you. But these stories involve women who prayed the rosary and how it changed their lives. The Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes is coming up on February 11th, so I figured this was the perfect time to share some more amazing rosary stories because we have a great devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes here. And if you're not familiar with the rosary, it is a set of prayers that are prayed using rosary beads. The prayers include the Our Father, the Glory Be, the Hail Mary, and the Apostles' Creed. And while you pray the prayers, you are meditating the whole time on the life of Jesus, starting with the Annunciation from the Angel Gabriel all the way to His Resurrection and beyond. So the whole time you're praying, you are thinking about Jesus. And if you want more information on the rosary, we'll have a link in the description box down below. So as Kate said, we are huge fans here of Our Lady of Lourdes. So if you haven't heard her story, we're going to run through it quickly. And then we also want to update you about the latest Lourdes miracle, which was just confirmed in 2018. So the story of Lourdes starts in 1858 in a small town in the south of France. A small girl named Bernadette Subaru lived there, and over a course of months, the Blessed Mother appeared to her 18 times. So she was only 14 years old, and she came from a poor family, didn't have a lot of education. And one day she was out gathering firewood by the river Gav when she encountered this beautiful lady. They prayed the rosary together, and that's when things started to change. At first, it was the people of the town who changed because when Bernadette started saying, hey, I've seen this beautiful lady down by the river, they all said, oh, sure you did, teenager. <laughs> you must be crazy. So they would follow her down to the river and they would make fun of her while she knelt on the ground praying the rosary. And especially when the Blessed Mother asked Bernadette to dig in the ground to reveal a spring of water, they just saw her digging in the bare dirt and they said, oh, look at her. She's obviously off her rocker. She's He's digging in the mud like a dog. But soon enough, water started to flow from the hole that she dug and it turned into a spring. And miraculous healings started to be attributed to that spring. So that's when the people started to change their minds. And after the people changed, the whole town changed. The town grew and grew. And soon enough, a huge basilica was built there, and that became the largest Christian pilgrimage site in the world. In an average year, four to six million people will go to Lourdes. There they pray, they bathe in the spring water, and many of them are healed. So as of 2020, there have been 70 confirmed miracles at Lourdes, with thousands of others reported. And number 70 was confirmed back in 2018. It was the healing of a nun, also named Bernadette, who had been wheelchair bound for 30 years with a spinal condition and in great pain. Back in 2008, she had received the blessing of the sick at Lourdes, after which she was able to actually get up out of her wheelchair and walk away. So that was such a miraculous healing, and it was submitted to the committee at Lourdes to be confirmed as a miracle, but that takes time because the doctors and the officials investigate it very thoroughly. So it took 10 years for this one to be confirmed, but in 2018, it finally was. There have been thousands of healings at Lourdes, but they're not all officially confirmed because it does take a long time to get that official word. So I have been to Lourdes several years ago. I was lucky enough to go and I can tell you that when you go there, you know immediately that you are on holy ground. There's just something different about the air even there. Um, it's a place full of peace and hope and healing. And if you ever get a chance to go there, by all means go, you will not regret it. And it all started with two women praying the rosary. And so we love this feast day and we celebrate it every year again on February 11th. And now Lourdes is pretty famous. So let's go on now and talk about a story that you might not have heard about. So this story takes place in Marbury, Alabama in the 1940s at the Dominican Monastery of St. Jude, which is a perpetual rosary monastery, meaning that someone there day and night is praying the rosary. 
So the idea of having an order of nuns who perpetually pray the rosary around the clock was the brainchild of a French priest named Father Damien Santorens. So he had this idea of having the nuns always saying the rosary, but he wasn't sure if that was something that was really good to do. So he decided that he would get expert help. So he went to some place, wait for it, he went to the Grotto at Lourdes and spent the night there in prayer asking Our Lady for her opinion. And after that night, he came out and he reported that Our Lady had given her okay, she liked the idea, so he founded several perpetual rosary monasteries, including the one in Marbury, Alabama. But not long after that monastery was established, there was a terrible forest fire in the area. So remember, this was in the 1940s in the backwoods of Alabama, and there was no 911, there was no nearby fire department, and when the nuns saw the fire, it was just coming racing down the hill right at them and their new monastery. So at that point, they thought it was all over. They weren't going to get out of this one. But their foundress, Mother Mary Dominic, decided to pray to Our Lady for help. And so after they prayed, she actually went outside towards the fire and took her rosary and threw it into the flames. And at that very minute, the winds shifted direction and began to push the fire back up the hill. That is an amazing story. Another amazing story happened in a college town in Florida. So this was in the 1970s when the serial killer Ted Bundy was out on the loose. Now he was young and handsome, but he was completely sick and he killed many women over a five year period. Yeah, and he was very diabolical because he was young and handsome and charming and he would go onto the college campus and he would fake an illness or an injury. He would stand by his car with his arm in a fake cast or on crutches and he would call out to a girl, hey, could you come over here and help me? Could you carry my books inside? Because you know, I'm kind of laid up here. And so that's how he would get the girl into his car and then drive off and kill her. Mm. So one night he decided to go on a killing spree at a sorority house in Florida and the girls knew him from around the college campus. They all loved him so it was very easy for him to get into the sorority house and nobody suspected that he was a killer but of course he was and he killed two women that night and assaulted two others. And then he was going on to number five, but when he got to her room, he just stood in the doorway and looked at her. And for some reason, he was not able to enter into her room. He never fully understood why. He said, I fully intended to kill her, but something stopped me at the door. I was not able to get in. There was some type of mysterious force that kept me out. So he wound up just dropping his weapons and running away. And a priest was called to the crime scene and he talked to the woman who had escaped. And she said that before she left for college, she promised her family that she would pray the rosary every day before she went to bed for protection. So the rosary that she was saying saved her life. Our next miracle story about women who prayed the rosary comes from the country of Brazil in the 1960s. At that time, President Goulart of Brazil was very pro-communist and he started appointing communists to high positions in the government. So that was very alarming for the people of Brazil, so Cardinal de Beres Camara said, hey, let's start praying the rosary. Let's do what Our Lady of Fatima told us to do and pray the rosary for the end of communism and for peace. At that time in the world, several countries such as Poland and Hungary and Cuba had fallen to communism and there was a great deal of persecution and suffering and martyrdom happening in these countries. And of course, the people of Brazil did not want that. And the president, he openly mocked the cardinal and the rosary, saying that only the government, not God, could save Brazil. But this didn't sit right with a lot of people, especially one woman, Amelia Bastos, and she started forming groups of women to go out and pray the rosary. And she even formed a group called the Campaign of Women for Democracy. So at one point she had 20,000 women organized to march and pray the rosary and they marched to a pro-communist rally and broke it up peacefully. And then in the city of Sao Paulo, 600,000 marched together to pray the rosary and all over the country rosary rallies started springing up. 
and threats were made against the woman praying the rosary, but that didn't stop them. They continued to hold their rallies and pray for peace. And eventually, on April 6, 1964, President Goulart took his communist government and fled the country without a single shot having ever been fired. So the rosary is truly a powerful weapon. Once when Mother Teresa was going through airport security, she got stopped and the guard said, do you have any weapons on you? And she said, yes, I do. And the guard said, what? You have a weapon? Mother Teresa has a weapon. And she said, I do. And she got out her rosary and she handed it over to him. And praying the rosary is a great way to spend time with Jesus as we meditate upon his life. And the Blessed Mother will always lead us to her son. So we want to leave you today with a, one of our favorite quotes from Sister Lucia dos Santos, who was one of the children who saw the Blessed Mother in Portugal at Fatima in the early 1900s. She was only 10 when the Blessed Mother appeared, and before then she couldn't read or write. But the Blessed Mother told her that she needed to learn to do both so she could spread the message of the rosary. So that's exactly what she did. She learned to read and write and eventually joined a convent, and her life was so different from that point on. Instead of just living out her life in this little town in Portugal, being a shepherdess and tending the sheep, she met with famous people from all over the world. She spread the message of the rosary all over the world. She even met with popes such as John Paul II. So you can see that praying the rosary truly changed her life. So Sister Lucia's advice to us is this. I'm going to read it off. There is no problem, I tell you, no matter how difficult it is, that we cannot resolve by the prayer of the Holy Rosary. So please keep praying your rosaries. Pray them for your own personal intentions, but also pray for peace in the world. Mary will take your prayers straight up to Jesus, and we know that he will never say no to his mother. That's right. He is a good Jewish boy, and he always listens to his mother, and he does what she tells him. So thank you for joining us today. We hope that you enjoyed these stories, and we hope that you have a very happy and blessed Feast of Our Lady of Lords. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.